Fernando Torres is one of the greatest strikers the Euros has ever seen. So what better time to do a lesson on El Nino now that Euro 2024 is heating up? Most of you will know him for his lethal Liverpool spell or perhaps that polarising Chelsea era that saw him pay back his entire transfer fee with that iconic goal against Barcelona to have Gary Neville yelling. But make no mistake, this guy was a true wonder kid from early. Torres was the kind of guy that could beat you in the air to score, he could burst past you in the blink of an eye to bag or even just outstrength you to create the tiniest gap of separation to fire home. It goes without saying that he was a massive reason Reason why Spain was so dominant during their dynasty of two European championships with the small matter of a World Cup sandwich in between. So how did he go from the baby face assassin to a youth team coach who looks like a bouncer who would spark your joy if you try crossing? Well, after a little holiday from our classroom lesson this last few weeks, it's time to grab your pen and paper again and educate ourselves on one of the best strikers to come from Atleti's never-ending conveyor belt of number nines. Fernando Torres was born in 1984 into a family of avid Atletico Madrid supporters and it didn't take him long to follow suit. After starting his career as a goalkeeper at the age of 5, he was pushed up to striker by 7 years old and was tearing apart records at Marius Holanda and Rayo 13 like it was nobody's business. This earned him a trout at Atleti that he grabbed with both hands and instantly fired his way up the youth ranks. Him playing alongside these 12 year old kids in 1996 felt like a year 11 kid bullying the new year 7 in school, even though he wasn't that tall. And by the age of 15, he signed his first professional contract. A week after his debut, he scored against Albacete, but a minor shin injury meant he couldn't help them out of the second division until the following season. In his very first Liga campaign, he bagged 13 goals in 29, and it became very apparent that he was going to be a problem, with some of the biggest teams in Europe now doing tug of wars for his signature. The teenager stayed and decided to become Barcelona's tormentor in chief. The way this guy used to score goals against Barca, you just know Puyol must have been sick of the sight of him. He imposed himself so much that by the age of 19, he was given the captain's armband, and then responded with back-to-back -back 20 goal seasons in all comps. This Train showed no signs of slowing down as he'd finished as Spain's top scorer in the World Cup qualifiers and the 06 World Cup itself. Chelsea had been knocking on his door every summer with no answer, but after 91 goals in 244 games, Torres finally decided to make the move to the Premier League in 2007. Unfortunately for Chelsea fans, it was Rafa Benitez who turned his head and brought him to Anfield instead. And to make matters worse, his first Liverpool goal was against Chelsea. With all the physical qualities I mentioned before, it's no shock that he wasted no time acclimatising to the league, scoring back-to-back -back home hat-tricks against Middlesbrough and then West Ham to add to his earlier hat-trick in the League Cup. English pundits will constantly speak about Europeans coming to the Barclays and getting bullied, but Torres clearly didn't understand the word they were saying because he was out there dunking on heads against teams that were notoriously physical. This was actually the highest goal-scoring debut season for a foreigner in Prem history, surpassing Van Nistelrooy's 23 goals. His 24 meant that he'd finished second in the Golden Boot race with Adebayor and he it was unfortunate that Ronaldo and Fabregas had their seasons to pip him to PFA Player and Young Player of the Year. No dramas though, he took his electric form into Euro 2008 where he formed a deadly partnership with David Villa, scoring himself against Sweden on the way to the final against Germany where he'd scored the only goal to win Spain the trophy and cement himself as one of the best strikers on the planet. After Abramovich bailed his line again all summer, it seemed that Torres finally blocked his number and scored a long-range bullet on the opening day to remind the Liverpool fans that he was their man. Goals against Everton certainly reassured them that he was going nowhere and the goal just kept flowing. They could play those line balls into channels and he was unstoppable because you never knew if he was going to hit it across goal far corner with his right foot or cut inside and finish with his left. Him and Gerrard's link-up was almost telepathic. The only way Torres could be stopped was via his own hamstrings. He was simply too fast for them and therefore had constant two, three week layoffs that hampered his ability to go for more records. That didn't stop him from smoking Chelsea again and making Vidic eat dirt again. They say it's a myth because they didn't score against United every single time, but those of us with eyes know his all-round game was terrifying. After scoring Spain's fastest ever hat-trick in the 2009 Confederations Cup, constant knee injuries the following year meant he was reduced to more of an impact sub as Spain won their first ever World Cup. From the high of the World Cup, coming back to Liverpool being managed by Roy Hodgson, it was clear despite the goals that he wasn't enjoying life as much as when he first got there. At long last, in January 2011, he finally picked up Abramovich's call and handed in a transfer request that eventually led to him smashing the transfer record for a British club. But his 50 million move was quickly regarded as a horror deal, as it took him until the end of April to score his first goal, his only one that entire season. His troubles were highlighted by that infamous open goal miss at Old Trafford, and it seemed like Liverpool must have given him some sort of clone. Even though he played almost every game, the goals were just few and far between, scoring just six league goals. But in the Champions League, it was a different story, because he came on for 
Drogba to score the iconic last minute goal and haunt Barcelona once again to send Chelsea to the Champions League final that they go on to win on penalties. Suddenly the 50 million transfer fee and all the money they spent buying credit to call him was worth it as they finally won the trophy that had eluded them all these years. In the summer, he bagged the brace in his first Euro 2012 game on the way to a golden boot after scoring in the final to dispatch of Italy. But back at club level, he wasn't able to kick on, his frustrations being summed up by the multiple red cards in between goal drafts. With a constant managerial merry-go-round including a reunited with his old gaffer Rafa Benitez not able to get that spark back, he'd leave the bridge after 45 goals in 172 games. Torres joined Milan on a two-year loan ahead of the 2014-15 season and scored a cold header against Empoli in his second game with the club. Sadly, that was to be the only highlight, as the man who was formerly known for bullying defenders was now a shadow of his former self. He'd still show glimpses that class is permanent, and so Milan made his deal permanent, but a couple days later he announced that he was going on loan back home to Atleti to rekindle that fire that was close to diminishing. An early brace against Madrid and the Copa del Rey knockouts had him feeling himself again, and Barcelona's nightmare was up to his usual tricks again. He scored some great goals outside the box, and his instinctive movement meant he was always going to score goals, even if the injuries had clearly caught up with him in the last few years. It's a shame because you look at these goals and you realise that a player like him spawning in today would dominate and crash it in any league. Although he knew his body was given up, he signed for one more year at Atleti after they were banned from signing new players. And he managed to end his final season with a Europa League trophy and a brace on the final match of the Liga. In July 2018, Torres decided to join Japanese club Sagan Tosu, which would allow him to play at a much slower pace than the league he'd been playing his trade at for the last 15 years. It comes as no shock that he scored pretty early in his stay there, and even started bagging his sister to his early goal scoring form. At times, they must have thought he was doing shadow clone jutsu, because he'd pop up out of nowhere and score goals out of thin air. And yet, still, in his first season, the numbers weren't hitting. He'd only register four goals after struggling to maintain fitness. And now, 35 year old Torres found it difficult to have his desired impact. And after three goals the following season, it was time to officially hang up his boots after a farewell match against his old teammates Iniesta and David Villa who are now at Vissel Cope. With 263 career goals in 768 games, it's fair to say that his prolific goal scoring as a youngster had him on the trajectory to be one of the all-time greats. Even though injuries cursed him in the second half of his career, the fact that he's so fondly remembered and loved by every club he was at speaks volumes of his football ability and hard-working attitude whatever club he represented. The Liverpool fans still love him despite going Chelsea, the Chelsea fans still love him despite the lack of goals when he brought them their first ever Champions League trophy, and many Atleti fans still regard El Nino as the one that really captured their hearts, even with all their crazy nines from a Guerrero to fall into Falcao. In fact, even rival fans couldn't help but enjoy watching Torres in his prime. The man who dominated the Euros for Spain and spent the last three years bulking up in the gym to intimidate any manager who stepped to him now as the coach of Atleti's various youth teams. So now we're going to see if he uses his win at all cost mentality to become another top Spanish coach of the future. Hopefully you guys learned something new today. If you did, leave a like on the video, comment what players you want to see in future lessons, and subscribe if you want me to keep doing these every week. Class dismissed. Bosh.